Good morning. This is Teresa Beam with Morning Thoughts, because I think best in the morning. Today we're going to talk about wisdom, a word that either strikes fear into your heart, or perhaps resentment, or more likely for most people, wisdom. Oh, yawn. <clears throat> you may never have even thought about what wisdom is, or how to get it, or that God even desires you to get it. Wisdom is vital for Christians in today's world. With the culture we live in, getting wisdom is more important than getting survival food or shelter or um, getting your conceal and carry, getting an education or getting money or saving for your retirement. Wisdom is way more important than those things. Wisdom is what wakes us up and makes us alive. Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. Well, wisdom says, pursue wisdom and you will think. Okay, let's start at the beginning. God told the writer of Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Let me tell you what happened to me a couple of months ago at Christendom College in Front Royal, Virginia. There was a dinner in which I got to meet Dr. Scott Hahn, and I was so excited that I got all jumbled up, and I was trying to express to him how his YouTube videos had helped me to understand the fear of the Lord. And he just looked up at me like I was crazy, and anyway, it was really funny, but what I told him was that whenever I go to the front in Mass to receive the Eucharist, I always stand behind my husband because Dr. Hahn explained in his videos that the Spirit of God is there so powerfully. We should expect at any moment the church will take off and at any moment his glory may burst forth. So I I stand behind my husband (laughs) expecting that to happen. And it was wonderful for me. And I'll tell you why. Because I was raised in a culture to think of Christ as our buddy, as our dearest friend. He's all merciful. He's all loving. But we tend to focus on the gentle Jesus to the total exclusion of his powerful holiness. If the people in the Bible fell at angels' feet thinking they were God, imagine if we actually saw God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This is the place we enter and start the journey of wisdom. And our world desperately needs wisdom. Years ago, I had a friend who was lamenting to me that she had no one for her children to sit at their feet and learn from and listen to, that she said even the grandparents today seem to lack wisdom. We have knowledge. We all sit at our computers and phones, picking the fruits of infinite knowledge with our fingertips. And because we have all this information right here, we no longer think we even need to know or seek wisdom. Look at the reporters and all the commentators on television and radio, cable and the internet. There are all these young people that are stuffed with facts, having no ability to assess the facts with wisdom because they have not lived long enough. But we trust them because we don't see a lot of older folk with wisdom anymore. We have lost respect. Many of us don't even know what respect for our elders is anymore because our elders lack wisdom. They lack wisdom because they never sought it. We have this idea that wisdom pursues us or that wisdom and long years just go together. But that's not what scriptures say. Seek wisdom. Wisdom doesn't come to us. We must go after it. Proverbs 2 tells us to pay attention. Receive and treasure God's commandments. Cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding. Seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasure. Then 
you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity. In Luke's gospel, he records the words of Jesus, quote, The queen of the south shall arise at the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, someone greater than Solomon is here. Think about those words of Jesus. We are to seek, go after seeking wisdom. We have no wisdom today in America because we don't seek it and we don't fear the Lord. Psalm says, teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Take some time out of your day and think about the fact that we're only here for a little while. This gift of life is temporary and our days are numbered. So let's seek wisdom with all our heart. As we seek wisdom, life gives us battles to fight, battles against selfishness, battles to clear away other distractions and hear the Holy Spirit speaking to our hearts, battles to give time to God in study and prayer and going to mass or to church, battles against our own anger and resentfulness, battles to being patient with others, not manipulating others to get what we want. Each day has its own cross to bear, and as we sacrifice for others, the weight of our crosses grow lighter. We become habituated in knowing and doing what is right and good. Each battle we win, we stretch our capacity to understand. Our wisdom grows each time we act in accordance to what is right. And the harder the battle, the greater the victory when we win it. And through God's grace, we will win these battles and soon we will be able to see and understand things we never believed possible. Worlds of thought will break open for us. We will see at 50 feet above the earth, then at 500, then from 5,000. Eventually, our perceptions and understandings will be stretched so mightily, God will give us the wisdom to see life from 30,000 feet above, and the Holy Spirit will stretch us in the other direction, and we will have the understanding to see life through a microscope. And this wisdom comes from God. Proverbs 28 says, He who trusts his own mind is a fool, but he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. 1 Corinthians 1 says, He, God, is the source of your life in Jesus Christ, whom God made our wisdom, our righteousness, and sanctification and redemption. Uh, St. James the Apostle says, But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, without uncertainty or insincerity. Proverbs 19 says, He who gets wisdom loves himself. Now we talk about self-esteem. Well, if you really want to feel good about yourself, then get wisdom. So now we know it's from God, but how do we acquire this wisdom from God? Well, the Holy Spirit imparts wisdom upon us, but the scripture tells us how the Holy Spirit does this. In Proverbs 29, he says, The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. So we need to read scripture We need to make sure our children are brought up with discipline and with instruction. Solomon tells us to rise early and seek wisdom. Go to the ancients for counsel. We're told to be humble, to be meek. 
St. James tells us, Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good life, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. We are to love righteousness and depart from evil. Wisdom 1-4 says that wisdom will not enter a deceitful soul, nor dwell in a body enslaved in sin. Sin makes us stupid. That's why we can see people today in Hollywood and in the entertainment field sing the praises of the brilliance of other entertainers. (laughs) They go to them for wisdom and politics and even morals. We're so saturated with sin in our culture that in many cases it's closed our minds and made us think in a box smaller and smaller and smaller. It seems like now all we do is use our feelings instead of our brains. Sins have completely wiped out so many people's ability to think and reason. Like animals, all we do, or not all of us, of course, but it seems like so many of us just react with emotion rather than intellect. Matthew eleven nineteen says, Wisdom is justified by her deeds. If you want to know who is truly wise, look at their deeds. In the book of Proverbs, in the first chapter, King Solomon says, Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Wisdom cries aloud in the street. In the markets, she raises her voice. On the top of walls, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. How long, O simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you because I have called and you have refused to listen, have stretched out my hand, and no one has heeded, and you have ignored all my counsel, and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when pain strikes you, when panic strikes you like a storm, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then They will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. For the simple are killed by their turning away, and the complacence of fools destroys them. But he who listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of evil. These are pretty ominous words. Time for us to seek wisdom, and it's right there. Get on your knees, and let's get started with the fear of the Lord. Thank you. You guys have a wonderful day.